Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next webinar. We are going to start in a few minutes. We are waiting for more attendees to come. So, my name is Victor Neustroy. If you may know, I, um, I conducted five webinars on Forex board. So, hello, guys. Uh, I'm from Russia, so you please share what country I am from. And also, please um, tell me if you can see me and uh, if you if the sound is okay. Okay, good. Okay, if you have any questions um, regarding my previous webinars, you can also ask me. And uh, today, uh, while we are waiting for other attendees, I'm going to show you how uh, my expert uh, the, uh, my expert advisor that I uh, demonstrated here on my first webinar, how it works. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to share my statements, but uh, we will just use uh, the back testing mode. Okay, we have 11 attendees now. Okay, so do you remember uh, um, I, uh, on my first webinar I was talking about uh, this expert advisor, which was called which is called Stomper, and uh, I just want to show you how it worked. Uh, the best currency pair, as we um, as I told you last time, it was Euro GBP. So let's check how it worked um, from uh, the from June to uh, until now. Uh, it demonstrates quite good results, especially because the, the market is uh, almost flat and uh, even it works on uh, most currency pairs. Um, usually for this expert advisor, which is a scalper, of course, I prefer to trade it on um, cross courses, but um, as I um, just uh, made a few tests, it also works on um, Euro USD, for example, or even in um, USD, Swiss franc. So actually on Euro GBP, it, it is not quite well as I, as I wanted. Um, another good pair for this uh, expert advisor was uh, Euro Swiss franc. Here it is. So let, let's see how it worked. Now we have 12 attendees. Please guys, uh, tell me oh, what country you are from. Okay, this is how it works on um, Euro Swiss franc. It's quite good. Almost uh, just a few losses. Oh, there was a huge drawdown, but um, it's still. Uh, it still has a profit. Okay, let's check, for example, Euro USD. However, this um, uh, this expert advisor wasn't optimized for this uh, currency pair. Oh, I, I see Sergey is from Ukraine. Uh, that's <laughs> quite good. Uh, Sergey, do you have the same accent as I have? Ibrahim from USA and uh, Colin from South Africa. Okay, so yeah, we see it works on Euro USD, but it brings only just a small profit with a few drawdowns. Let's check, uh, for example, British pound against Swiss franc. Uh, 
and Jeffrey is from uh, USA Houston. Okay, so uh, you see, um, for for the last half of the year, this expert worked uh, better for British pound against Swiss franc. That's quite good. Okay, what else to test? Uh, for example, let's check USD against Swiss franc, how it worked. Okay, while well, we are waiting for um, more people coming. Um, I just want to share a few news. Maybe um, Damien um, have already told you that uh, here on Forex board, we are launching two courses in, um, in a few months. I, I believe in a two months. So one of them will be about um, uh, about candlestick patterns. Another will be about optimizing expert advisors in MetaTrader 4, and I'm working on the second. So, oh, by the way, you see how it works on uh, USD against Swiss franc. That, that's, I think it's the best result. It's uh, almost, yeah, it's more than five, uh, it's more than $400 with a uh, maximal drawdown less than just 100. That's quite good. Okay, so yeah, we are launching two courses in the next two months. Um, yeah, I was speaking about uh, the one that um, is about optimizing expert advisors. So I'm gonna share this expert advisor that I have already demonstrated here just now. Um, yeah, I will not only give you the settings and um, this uh, expert advisor, but I will teach you how to optimize expert advisors in general. So you can apply this um, algorithm, this optimizing algorithm to to any strategy that can be, then you can code. So, uh, if you have any questions, um, just any about Forex, uh, by the way, uh, what do you guys think about Bitcoin? Uh, uh, so, I'm not recommending to invest money right now, but um, I uh, invested just a small amount in uh, Bitcoins and um, then the price uh, went up but then it decreased and now it's uh, on the same level where I bought Bitcoins. So probably it has a potential to go up but uh, we see that it can, it can just decrease so rapidly and so <laughs> I'm not sure that my investment is a is really um, a good option so but when I um, when I bought bitcoins I was thinking that it's a really good deal um, however now I see that the market is very volatile and especially, especially it's because um, of uh, it's because CME launched uh, futures on Bitcoin, and uh, uh, many people decided um, just to sell Bitcoins. Uh, I mean, not uh, not Bitcoins, but futures on Bitcoins, and that's why the price dropped. Yeah, and some people are making money on uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah, and uh, Bitcoin is not the most volatile cryptocurrency. I believe uh, another another currency that I like, but I didn't invest money in it. It's Ripple. Uh, so Ripple was uh, the price of the Ripple was less than one dollar, 
but then it's increased up to three dollars uh, and i really wonder it however now the price is just very close to one dollar just a little bit higher but i think it's uh, i mean if speaking about ripple i, I believe it has um, a future because uh, banks are using this um, cryptocurrency to um, make more transfers between banks and it's that's quite important it's um it's um, just a new way of interbank cooperation so i i worked uh for a bank for four years this is um, a bank uh, that was located in russia and uh, uh it was from top 20 of Russian banks. And um, so I was very close to dealing and um, to interbank operations. So I'm very familiar with it. And I know that it's quite important sometimes to transfer the money from one bank to another bank. And um, sometimes it takes so much time. So I believe Ripple can solve this problem. Yeah, yeah, Jeffrey, I agree. The blockchain technology is supposed to be the big thing. Okay, guys. Um, so let's start the webinar. So there are 12 attendees right now. And I just want to remind you that uh, today our topic is how to trade using channels. Okay, let's start. Uh, the, this webinar is recording and uh, the record will be uploaded to forexboat.com uh, in a few days. Uh, be sure to read the disclaimer. And uh, just for those who don't know uh, who I am, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Victor Neustroyf. I'm a private trader. And since uh, 2003, I have been trading financial markets. I started with Forex, then I brought in, uh, then I brought in my horizons to commodity markets, and now I uh, specialize mostly in agricultural markets because I consider them to be more transparent. But I also trade Forex, and I have a few strategies that work, and um, especially some expert advisors that really work so uh, as for me i i'm not a quarter but i prefer to hire a quarter to to code the strategy because then i can optimize it and uh, um, it could work for for a few months or even for a year uh, by the way the the longest period without uh, changing any settings for for one of my expert advisor was two years and a half. So for two years and a half, the strategy worked. Of course, there were drawdowns, but it worked. Um, however, today our topic is not um, algorithmic trading. It's how to trade using channels. So I'm going to turn off my camera and start presentation. Okay, I hope you read the disclaimer. So price channels are a trading concept that is borrowed from the traditional trend line concept. So instead of plotting a simple trend line, the price channels consist of two trend lines, upper and lower trend lines. And uh, trade signals are taken when price breaks out or bounces back of the upper or lower trend lines or of the price channel. And when combined with support resistance methods and of course candlestick patterns, uh, trading price channels offers a great way to trade the markets. 
and uh, but um, I also I should um, notify you that um, price channels trading requires quite a bit of practice and analyzing the market structure. So this is our webinar plan. So first we're going to speak about types of channels, uh, ascending, descending and horizontal channels. Then I will tell you what is three touch rule, uh, when to open and close the trade, uh, which indicators to use to define channels, uh, how to manage stops and um, at the end of the webinar I'm going to show you just a few filters how to improve your strategy. Um, so two filters, one for um, trend following strategy and another for range trading strategy. So let's let me tell about um, types of channels. So think of a trading channel as a horizontal trading range being turned at an angle. So where the range is trading between relatively defined levels of support and resistance. The angular channel is either making higher highs, it's it is ascending channel. Or lower lowers, which is descending channel. If we see that the market is almost flat, we can use horizontal channels. So um, you see, um, these two highs are almost at the same level. So that's why we can call it a um, horizontal channel. Okay, let me explain you how to draw a channel in MetaTrader 4. This is my MetaTrader 4 trading platform. Let's go to um, another chart, EURUSD. So I use, uh, I click here, insert channels. I use Fibonacci. Then I, if I see that there is an uptrend, I should find two minimums. Here is one and this is another one. Just wait a second. Once again, uh, first we take this minimum, then we click to another one. So we fixed the first, um, um, I mean, the bottom line of the channel. Then we need to find a, a maximum between these two minimums. And then we just uh, move this upper line and um, put it just on um, on the maximum. So this is the channel. This is how we draw channels. Actually, maybe some other traders do it in other ways, but um, this is just one uh, very basic thing that you should know. Okay, let's look to the properties. Uh, here, there are feeble levels. Um, so usually they are 0 0.618, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619, 0 0.619,
then one, then uh, zero, one, uh, no, I mean, okay, then one, then uh, 1.618, then 2.618, and so on. However, I deleted all these levels and add one more, which is minus 0 0.5, and it uh, helped me to draw this parallel line. So you see these lines are paralleled. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. If uh, speaking about trades, we are looking for long position when the channel is ascending. So when you see the ascending channel, you should open only buy trades or only long trades. If it is descending, like like this one, this example, then we are looking for short trades only. And if the market is flat and we can draw a horizontal channel, we can trade both directions. So we can uh, either open um, long and short trades. Now I'm going to explain you what three touch rule is. So when you trade using channels, one of the lines is a trend line. So I have already mentioned in the, in the beginning. So uh, for example, here we can notice an uptrend and our task is to draw a trend line. That's why we use the minimums. And to confirm the trend line, the price should touch the line three times. So the first point on the chart here, first touch, uh, it's simply a random point on that chart, uh, just any minimum you can find. When a second point appears, no matter where it appears on the chart, it can be connected to the first by a straight line, but that really tells us nothing. And when the third point occurs and it can be connected by the same straight line that connects points one and two, now we have something from which we can start trading. Okay, once uh, the third touch occurs, provided that uh, the candle does not close above the trend line in the downtrend, or in our case, below the trend line, if we see an uptrend. So in other words, we can say that price respects the trend line. In this case, we could take a position at the open of the next candle. So here it touches on the next candle. Here we can open a long position. And our stop would go below the trend line. Uh, if it's an uptrend or above the trend line if it's downtrend. So um, later I will tell you more details about how to set stop losses. So once again, uh, if looking at this chart, a trader could take a buy a long position at the open of next candle, of this candle, this white first white candle. Uh, but another option, of course, is to wait for next touch. So wait until the next touch and then uh, open um, along. So let's go back to our channels. So once again, the price section must come into contact with the lower channel three times before a long position can be taken. Also, before a short position can be taken, price section must come into contact with the upper channel line at least three times. So here, 
uh, this is example of short trade. And um, the rationale behind the three touches is that any two points on the chart can be connected by a straight line. And those two touches may be the beginning of a valid line, or they may turn out to be nothing. However, if three points on the chart can be connected by a straight line, now we know that um, that particular price level is providing support or resistance. In the case of this chart, a trader could take a short position on a British pound against American dollar after price tests the upper channel line. So here it's a third touch. On the next candle, we can um, open a short position, but we can also wait until um, the price touches their upper line once again. And after that, uh, we open the short position. So you see, we can sell here on the next candle. Uh, so since the channel is descending and the daily trend on this pair is to the downside, uh, I think shorting the pair is the higher probability trading scenario. Oh, while some aggressive or impatient traders may take a trade after two touches, for example here on this black candle, Duck candle. Um, uh, I prefer to wait for the greater confirmation uh, that uh, the third, the third touch provides this one. Um, okay, so uh, I was I also want to point out that on this chart uh, there were several places along the channel lines at which several candles come into contact with the channel line at virtually the same point. So for example, here you see there were two candles which um, um, touches, which touch the lower line. So in, in this case, that would count as a single touch. Okay, so there is a question. What is the best time frame for trading channel? Mm, it depends on um, the concrete channel. So, of, so for example, um, if you like uh, trading uh, in horizontal channels, you'd better use um, such time frames like M5, M15, M30. Um, if um, so, usually the best one are H1 and H4 for the channels. Sometimes daily. Oh, H1. Uh, more trades will be on H1 on early time frame. But you can apply, um, uh, you can uh, use channels on any time frames. Okay, so let's continue. So as I as I told you, there is that's a single touch here, 
two, two candles at the same time, so it's a single touch. So we want to see a touch occur and then have price section pull away and then come back and test the same level again. And that will provide the greater validity that we're seeking. Okay, let's use uh, the daily chart of EURUSD, that's sending trading channel. And uh, let me tell you how uh, to enter a trade and place our stops and take profits here. This is an example of the long trade. So in the case of ascending trading channel, a trader could go long after the third touch of the lower channel by price. So like it was here. Okay, you see price, um, the price is respecting the support presented by a lower channel line. Uh, we can see that these two candles here, the third touch, have broken the channel line but have not closed below it. That is a good indication that a long position can be taken with a stop placed just below at the previous minimum. So if we enter the market here on this light candle, we put our stop on the second touch. If we um, decided to wait until the next touch, for example, here, when um, so when it's uh, written open long trade, we um, should use this level, the level of previous minimum to set a stop loss. If, the, if then the price goes lower than uh, the stop loss, uh, our channel is now broken and um, so our trade um, would be unsuccessful in this case. So that's why we set um, the stop loss here just a little bit lower than the previous minimum. Uh, okay, just uh, one more thing I want to tell you about um, and try point. So you can you you can also use any oscillators to confirm the entry point. Um, as for this position, uh, I mean, as for this um, example, you can open um, a long position immediately after. Um, after this dark candle was closed. So here you can open a, uh, a long position. Or you can wait for another touch like it is shown here. And uh, I just want you to know that waiting for another touch is less risky according to my experience. And in channel trades such as this one, I prefer to set my take profit just below the upper channel line here uh, usually it's five to ten percent below but of course it depends on the market volatility so, so i do this um, because price will move in the direction of the trade but it can fall just short of their upper channel line as it did no, actually here it uh, close. It was very close to the um, upper uh, channel line. However, sometimes um, the price um, doesn't touch the upper line. It just falls then, and that's why it's important not to. Um, not to set a take profit at the same level as um, the upper line of the channel is, but just five to to ten percent below this line. 
and in this case there is a high chance um, that your um, long position will be closed with a take profit so i i mean it's it's um, the, there is uh, the probability is higher than if you said take profit here um on their upper line of the channel so usually it's better just to capture um 80 to 90 percent of the move so um if we calculate the width of this channel uh, we should take uh, only 80 to 90 percent of the distance and once again so the distance between the take profit line here and uh, the upper channel line is about 10 percent of the move Uh, the same thing happened with our short trade in our previous example. So you see, this is our take profit. It's about 5% above the lower channel line. And if speaking about uh, uh, stop losses, you see every time I set a stop loss, at the level of the previous extremum. So here, when we enter the market here, um, I decided to set a stop loss just a little bit lower than the previous, a uh, little bit higher than the previous maximum. So higher than the third touch point. In this example. If you have any questions regarding um, how to find an entry point, so when to open a trade when you use channels, just don't hesitate to ask them now because then I want to tell you about uh, the indicators to use to draw channels. So is everything clear? regarding how to open a trade, when to set a stop loss and to take profit. Okay, so anyway, if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask, I will answer. So this, okay, yeah, there is a question. Okay, there is a question from Darren. Uh, do you trail or move your stop loss? Okay, it depends on the concrete strategy, Darren. Uh, um, in some of my strategies, I just use the fixed stop loss and fixed, uh, I mean, just uh, I count them from the lower and uh, upper trend uh, channel lines. But sometimes I also trail the stop loss. And uh, later on this webinar, I'm going to show you how to trail the stop loss. Uh, th there is a good trick. Yeah, so um, um, just wait a little bit and i show you i will show you how to trail your stop loss uh, by the way you can apply this technique to any strategy that you have okay now let me tell you about indicators which can help you to define channels um, you can find a lot of them on the internet uh, some of them are also built into metatrader 4 but Mm, I want you to describe, I, I want to describe only those that, in my opinion, can improve most strategies. Mm, for example, this channel, in this example, is based 
uh, on standard deviation indicator. So standard deviation is the way of volatility measuring based on statistical methods. And standard deviation uh, influences the width of this channel. I found this indicator on um, MetaQuotes website. So MetaQuotes is the company that created MetaTrader. That's why there are a lot of indicators for MetaTrader there on their website. So I found it there. But um, uh, MetaTrader 4 also provides a tool for um, a standard deviation channel. Let me show you. channels, standard deviation, and this is how we can just uh, draw a channel. And this is the indicator, just wait a second. Yeah, standard deviation channel. So the uh, the only input uh, that you should uh, enter here is bars for calculation. So how how many bars to calculate? So let it be 120. This is how it draws the um, the channel. So by the way, the channel looks good. The the price is very close to the to these trend lines. So um, I, I mean, you could use any of these examples, any of these channels. Um, so I mean, you can apply the same technique as I demonstrated you when I used uh, my Fibonacci, just parallel channels. Okay, let's close this chart. Okay. Okay, another example is a linear, linear regression channel. So uh, you may know linear regression is a statistical analysis tool used for forecasting of future values on basis of available data. If the trend is ascending, one can logically suppose that the next bar will be a bit higher than the preceding one. And the linear regression method allows having a statistical demonstration of such logical conclusions. Uh, this channel consists of two parallel lines, equidistant up and down from the line of linear regression. And the distance between the frame of the channel and regression line equals to the value of maximum close uh, price deviation from the regression line. So um, let me show how to use this um, object. So here, click and search channel and linear regression. Then our task is just to um, to find two points from where to start and to finish. For example, let's let's start from this point, this candle, and up to the last bar. 
So um, as for me, I don't like regression channels, but I, sometimes I use this indicator just to indicate the, the trend. But but as for me, I um, uh, I prefer using open price method. So because it if you use um, if this indicator is based on uh, uh, closing prices, then it redraws very often. So uh, you see, it just uh, demonstrates the the trend. I've got uh, an indicator that that is easy to use. So click here. Okay, and here are inputs. Um, Uh, this indicator helps us to draw a regression channel. Um, there is a degree that's a power of polynomial. So if we click, if we put one, it will be just linear regression. If two, then parabolic. If um, three, then third power poly polynomial. So if one, then it's just linear regression. Then it's it looks like uh, parabolic. But uh, as for me, I prefer to use um, third power. Here it is. Looks pretty good. Uh, so, for example, how to use it, there is one more example. If the, the price is lower than bottom line, for um, I mean the lower line channel, for example, it was here or here, uh, then uh, you should open a long trade. If price is higher than uh, the upper line, like it was here, then short trade, so you sell. And uh, take profit. Uh, you should so take profit on uh, on the average line, like this green one, a uh, green line here. So if you bought here, you should close the trade with a take profit here. If you sold here, then you close the trade here on the take profit. Uh, if you, if speaking about stop losses in this case, I recommend to use um, support and resistance levels in this case. Just to make your um, stop loss uh, five to ten pips far from the support uh, or resistance level. Uh, just one more, um, just one more thing I want to show you. So you you see there is also equidistant channel. Uh, I don't really use it; it just draws the parallel lines. Okay, by the way, um, if you like these indicators, uh, which draws regression channel and uh, standard deviation channel, I can share with you. Um, I will ask Damien to upload them to uh, our private uh, trading group on Facebook. Uh, but you can also find them anywhere in the internet. Okay, do you have any questions regarding um, 
indicators. Uh, I mean, these indicators that helps us to draw a channel. Um, if not, then I want to show you just one interesting thing. So you remember you asked me a question about trailing the stop losses. And I just want to share uh, how to how to trail the stop loss using the channels. Usually, uh, when you created your own trading strategy, you know where to put stop losses and take profits. Uh, but today, in this on this webinar, I want to demonstrate another method of setting and trailing stops using the custom pricing channel. Uh, for these purposes, I use Don Kian channels. So this indicator is called Don Kian channels. Uh, ch channels. I can also share this indicator. So the, um, these Don Kian channels can be used to establish initial and trailing stop levels on the trade. The indicator is designed to display the current high and low for, for a specified number of periods. There is only one parameter to, to set manually, the number of previous trading sessions or bars, which has a default value of 20 and the highest high, uh, the lowest low and their mean value is calculated and it indicates the current support and resistance levels. So typically we use um, a period from 20 to 55 for these purposes. Let me show you it uh, in MetaTrader 4. So this is how it works. This is the only um, the, I mean, this is the only parameter that we can change. So it counts twenty bars. If you want. Um, uh, so traders that prefer wider stops should opt for a higher, uh, higher parameter. So, for example, if we, we click it, uh, if we change it to 55, you see that so this channel is wider. Okay, let's go back. Uh, this chart shows us the Euro um, Japanese Yen downtrend uh, that uh, lasted for a few days. Uh, for example, your strategy, just any, you can use any strategy you want. Uh, your strategy told you to enter the market with a short uh, position here. You see here yeah, in try point short position. So here you enter a short position. And uh, regardless of our and try mechanism, one fact remains the same. We need to manage risk. We can set an original stop loss using the 55 period. Ah, yeah, um, so, uh, So we should uh, set the stop loss using the 55 period high. So this is our original stop. This bar is 55 uh, period high. And that's why the indicator draw a channel here, the upper line of the channel. So we set our uh, stop loss here at this level. This is our original stop loss. And we can update it later when the price goes down.
uh, so you, you, you see the price went down and then we updated our stop loss then we update it once again so uh, even we can update it uh, just many times Uh, okay, um, if for example, when you open a short position here, um, and we believe that the market should be in downtrend, but um, it makes higher highs and the price goes down, uh, goes up, we would want to exit our position as quickly as possible. So, um, if you use this method, you will um, exit the market at this level of the original stop. Uh, however, we use uh, this pricing channel to lock and profit as trend develops. So the market goes down and we update our stop loss. Um, you can update it manually according to the um, Donkian uh, channel indicator. And this pro process can continue until price touches our, um, I mean, our upper line or even, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and uh, you see here the price is touched our upper line and this is where we should exit the market on the stop loss however you see how huge profit we can we could get here it's almost uh two figures i mean 200 points uh, 200 pips so when um if 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 it was a short trade we should close uh the position with a, with a stop loss when it touches the upper line of our donkey and channel so here it is this is a very helpful tool how to set and manage uh, stop loss especially if you trade using trend following strategy um, so as I told you, this indicator is not presented in MetaTrader 4, but uh, you can download it later in our Facebook private trading group, uh, or you can find it e anywhere in the internet. It is called um, Don Kian Channels. So this is the name, Don Kian Channels. And just one more thing I want um, um, to, to share you in this webinar. I want to demonstrate you two filters that can help to improve your strategy. Every filter can be applied to a certain type of the strategy, for trend strategies and for range strategies. These are basic filters. Uh, maybe you already know them. Um, for example this one is very simple and uh, this is what people um, uh, th this is what you should learn when you just start trading forex if you have a trend tr strategy that holds trades for a long period of time you should open your trades according to the direction of the overall trend you may know this rule it sounds like uh, the trend is your friend it's true um, if your strategy is a trend following strategy and you use it on trendy currency pairs such as euro usd british pound usd usd canadian dollar usd swiss franc and some others uh, but sometimes it's quite difficult to recognize the trend uh, what if you are not sure about the direction of the overall trend in this case, you may use just the 200 period simple moving average. That's an excellent and simple tool. 
uh, by averaging the closing price over the last 200 bars, we can see if the current price section is above or below the average. So we'll look at this chart. Anytime we see price above the 200 period moving average line, we should look for buying opportunities. Anytime we see price below the moving average line, we should look for selling opportunities. This ensures we are trading in the same direction as the overall trade trend. By the way, we can also take note of the strength of the existing trade by, by how far price has moved away uh, from the 200 period moving average. For example, here you see the price moved far away from the um, moving average, what means that um, the trend is strong. So here on this chart, the strong downtrend followed by an uptrend. This, uh, this is one of the um, common filters that are very useful for any strategy. For, I mean, for any trend following strategy. Uh, uh, and now I want to show you a filter for range strategy. Let's imagine, for example, that you have a range trading strategies which work best when the market is flat. For example, this strategy attempts to buy low and sell high when the price is moving prim primarily sideways. The only problem is that Sometimes market dynamics can change, turning a range in pairs into pairs that may begin trending. To recognize these range trading sessions, we can use a technical indicator called uh, the average directional index or just ADX. Uh, the ADX, it's not a direction filter, it's a filter that um, tells us if a currency pair is currently in the trend or not. So the higher ADX, the stronger the trend is either up or down. So the lower the ADX, the more the currency pair has been moving sideways. So this chart uh, shows a period of time where the price was trending. So here it was trending and ADX was above 25. So the key level for ADX is 25 and I used, I used 24 period ADX. Whenever the ADX is below 25, we should focus on trading range bound strategies. So if it's above 25, it's not suitable for range trading and um, it could actually be suitable for trend trading if uh, ADX moves high enough. And by eliminating our range trades, when ADX is above uh, 25, we have a better chances at turning a profit. So this is one of the helpful tools that uh, can filter the signals if your strategy is a flat, is a range strategy and you apply it when the market is flat. So if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to ask them now. Uh, actually, that was all that I wanted to share here in this webinar. So I'm going to run a poll. Uh, how satisfied are you from the webinar? And I want you to vote please vote when one is bad five is excellent so the poll will be, will be launched for just one minute
So guys, um, if you have any questions, just ask. Uh, I hope now you know more about uh, trading with the help of the channels. You can base your trading strategy on it, or you can just set a stop loss using uh, donkey and channels, as I demonstrated, and apply it uh, to your own trading strategy. So, guys, please vote. 77% of attendees voted. Okay, thank you, I closed the poll. Okay, just if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If, for example, if you don't have them now, but you can, um, you can just write them on uh, in our Facebook private trading group. So I will comment uh, and answer. If you need these indicators, I I will ask uh, Damien to upload them also there. So. Thank you for your attention. This is all I wanted to tell you in this webinar. So if there are no more questions, that's good. It means that you understand everything. So we will wait just for one minute. If there are no more questions, then we will finish the webinar. Uh, there is a question from Darren. You mainly trade using channels. Uh, yes, uh, Darren, uh, but I like um, horizontal channels. I mostly trade by them. So of course, sometimes on some markets such as Euro USD, you can't, uh, you can't just mm -hmm. uh, use only. Uh, only horizontal channels. Uh, how successful are you trading with channels? So I don't know how to answer this question. So I, I believe I'm quite successful with trading with channels, especially with uh, horizontal channels. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. I hope you will come for my next webinar. Okay, thank you all. I um, I finished the webinar. Again, thank you for coming.